he obviously likes her, and what I think is cool is everybody's expecting there to be like, you know, oh, you know, MJ goes through this makeover, and now she's the popular girl, and now Peter likes her, and that's not what happens here. Is really, you know, Peter likes her for exactly who she is, and all the little quirks and the weird things that make her, um, make her MJ, and he likes that. So I think it's it's cooler that way, you know? I think it just proves that, like, you know, if you're meant to be with someone, you're meant to be with them. In the first movie, like, I didn't really, um, obviously have too much to work with, but we, we kind of created a very distinct character with those few little moments, and now um, we're just able to expand on that and, and just learn more about her, you know? Because we don't really know about her. She's kind of mysterious and just, kind of in the background, so we just kind of get to see more sides of her character and um, how she responds in situations that make her be a little bit more vulnerable and how her and Peter, you know, connect. Him and Jacob, you know, they're just like so locked into their characters. In many ways, I think they are their characters, you know? Um, and so it's funny because neither of them really have to look at their lines <laughs> because I don't know, they're just so funny going back and forth off of each other. They can like look at their lines once and just like go back and forth and they can stutter and have fun and make up lines and all this kind of stuff because it works for their characters. Me on the other hand, I can't. A, I would freak out and have a panic attack if I don't know my lines, like word perfect. And then also um, my character like is so like, sure on everything she says that I can't kind of like go off and you know do these things like the whole point of it is that she never makes a mistake on anything really she just kind of knows what she's going to say before she says it a lot of the scenes where we're you know running from things or you know crazy stuff is going down there's a lot of really cool location shots shots that we were able to do so it's i mean it's pretty cool to be like running like away from like and really being able to see the scenery of like the tower of london and the tower bridge and like it's really there because i'm really here you know i, I don't know it's just kind of like being able to be in the real spaces like real time is really fun Just knowing all the, the crazy things that are gonna happen. There's like literally like so many massive action scenes. And I know that, I mean, that's what we come to watch, right? If we're watching a Spider-Man movie. And uh, I mean, they're great. And also to see them not in New York. Like we're so used to seeing these action scenes happen kind of in the same location so many times before. But now we're like, we're in Europe seeing these things. So it's kind of like Spider-Man doing his thing in another country is like, I don't know, it's just cool, you know? It's something we've never seen before. Hi guys, here's today's daily fact. The biggest Spidey fans have spotted different small details and Easter eggs in Spider-Man Far From Home, such as Peter's birthday marked on his passport as August 10th. Spider-Man's first appearance was in Amazing Fantasy number 15, released August 10th, but all the way back in 1962. Remember to click here below to subscribe on the side for more great content.